we had said that uh, animals can be classified in a number of groups, such as animals, metazoans, bilaterians, coelomates, chordates, etc. And so if I define the members of these groups, so you would be able to say that, ah, oh, you know, uh, the ones which are multicellular with a heterotrophic lifestyle, depending on predation of other things, util utilizing collagen as their major extracellular protein, you say, oh, that's the definition of animals. While which of the following have tissues, nerve cells, muscle cells, gonads, extracellular digestion, that would be metazoan animals, etc. So just be able to match them to their definition. The first animals, the sponges, are known prior to the Ediacaran period. The cnidarians, the, I'm sorry, metazoan animals, such as cnidarians, they're the most common and diverse animals in the Ediacaran period. Uh, bilaterans are known from uh, the Ediacaran period. And then the coelomates are either known at the very end of the Ediacaran period or from the beginning of the Cambrian period. So uh, I'll ask two questions where you match uh, these groups to when they are known. Now, uh, animals such as sponges possess only the cellular level of organization. Metazoans possess the tissue level of organization, while bilaterians or bilaterans uh, possess the uh, organ level of uh, organization. So just be able to match uh, different groups to the type of organization that they possess. We talked about feeding in sponges, so that the coanocytes uh, possess uh, flagella, and this creates a current of water. Water flows in the sponge through small openings known as ostea, until these channels unite to form the large osculum where water can leave. And in the meantime, the coanocytes trap uh, filtered food particles and undergo phagocytosis. Now, because they ingest these particles, they can only ingest the particles which are small enough for phagocytosis, and thus food size is limited in sponges. I could ask you a simple true-false question as to whether cnidarians are diploblastic or triploblastic. They're diploblastic. Um, I could ask you to match the tissues uh, to their functions, such as the uh, gastrodermis is made of endoderm and lines the gastrovascular cavity while uh, the epidermis is made of ectoderm and lines the outside of uh, the organism. I could ask you to describe how cnidarians uh, obtain food, and then you would uh, include the idea of nematocytes or stinging cells, uh, which can help uh, capture prey, especially when they're attached to tentacles. The prey is then brought into a gastrovascular cavity, and the gastrodermis then secretes digestive enzymes into this cavity so that extracellular digestion occurs. The food items are broken down while in this cavity, and then nutrients can be absorbed. This allows cnidarians to feed on larger items uh, than sponges. This gastrovascular cavity uh, not only uh, serves uh, a role in the digestive system, because uh, materials can uh, flow throughout, it also can help distribute materials since cnidarians do not have a circulatory system, and it offers resistance for muscle cells while contracting uh, as well. Uh, the nerve cells exist in a nerve net and help to coordinate the muscles uh, cell contractions, muscle cells that allow movement of the organism as it contracts on the resistance of the gastrovascular cavity, and then tentacles can be moved uh, individually as well. We know that cnidarians can have two life cycle stages, a cylindrical polyp with uh, tentacles around a central mouth, or a free-swimming medusa. Although some uh, animals, such as corals, only have the polyp stage, and some jellyfish only have the medusa stage. If um, there is a medusa stage, this is the stage where meiosis and sexual reproduction uh, occurs. Uh, we had talked about corals and some of the features of uh, their anatomy, so you should be able to match things like zooxanthellae to their definition. That's the endosymbiotic um, dinoflagellates which live inside corals, you know, etc. And uh, we explained uh, why uh, corals are important for marine uh, life, that they provide the habitat where, uh, you know, most of uh, marine fish spend some of uh, their life. Uh, they're also important uh, to humans uh, for uh, roles such as protecting uh, reefs, uh, providing uh, recreation and income with fishing, etc. But unfortunately, there are so many phenomena which are threatening coral reefs, from climate change uh, to 
uh, the sedimentation um, as erosion uh, adds a sediment to the water uh, to improper fishing techniques, etc. So you should be able to describe the roles of, uh, of corals uh, in marine life to humans, or also just be able to identify in a multiple choice question what threatened coral reefs.